Introduction of the Gauteng Provincial Appropriation Bill, G001-2023, for the 2023-2024 financial year. Second, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. The motion was not seconded. Ma Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, just for the benefit of hindsight and for procedure, we, we, we need to second the motion, Madam Speaker. We need to, we need to have the motion seconded. Thank you, thank you for the reminder. I put the question, uh, is there a seconder to the, to, to the motion? Please say aye or yes. Ma'am, yes. Thank you, uh, is there an objection to it? No. Thank you, motion adopted, thank you. Honorable Mamabulu, you can take the stage or the podium. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Let me greet and thank Honorable Premier, my colleagues in the Executive Council, the Chief Whip uh, of the Majority Party, the Honorable members of this house, let me also take this opportunity to extend a weight of appreciation and welcome to the finance space, our brand new uh, chairperson of the portfolio committee, um, Honorable Chilisi Munyai. And we wish you well, Honorable Chair. Allow me, Honorable Members, to also join the Deputy Speaker in wishing all the Honorable Members who are not well, wishing them well. Uh, Honorable Lidwaba, Honorable Mpisi, we wish them speedy recovery. In the House, we are joined by our sister, Mwiponi Malifani, the wife of the SACP General Secretary, Comrade Soli Mapaila. <clears throat> Let me also take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of the MMC of Finance in the city of Johannesburg. Um, Companero Tata Morero is in the house. <clears throat> uh, we are joined, honorable members, by the premier, by the mayor uh, of the city of Ekurren is here. Um, Councillor Campbell would like to acknowledge you and thanks for joining us. We do have in our midst the Premier, the County Youth Advisory Council um, leader, uh, Mr. Jose Andre, is here in the house. We also want to acknowledge and welcome him. We do have many guests, stakeholders. Uh, I would like to acknowledge all of them, but I think they will appreciate that for time. I would have loved to go through all of them and acknowledge each one of them here, but purely due to time, I would like them to forgive me uh, on that. However, we do have two very important guests, uh, Mr. Zakele Ndimande um, from the city of Ikuruleni and Tamsanga uh, Mbele. The two gentlemen are in business, they are business partners, 
uh, they are here. We first met with them when we were doing roadshows, promoting the township uh, economy development bill. Before it was the act, they were part of the roadshow in Sakali. They decided to go and form a business which is running, um, and they have a, a, a workshop in front of their house where they decided to start something um, cleaning and polishing shoes and I can tell you they are running a very successful business because I'm told per month on average they make about um, 18,000, I mean 16,000 um, from a zero balance in their bank account now they make jointly 16,000 so 8,000 at least and they started this business without borrowing any money, without anything major. And I met them, Honorable Premier, when we were opening schools this year. I went to an ECD in, in Sakani and they reminded me of our meeting. They are here and I would like to acknowledge them. They are running a successful business. They are the ones who received us when we came in. They were polishing shoes like it happens at the airport. We are tabling this budget following the State of the Nation Address delivered by President Cyril Ramaphosa, followed by the State of the Province Address by Premier Panyaza Sufi, and of course, that the National Budget Speech delivered by Finance Minister Inoko Dongwana. Honorable members, allow me to start where Premier Lesufi ended during the presentation of the State of the Province Address. The Premier correctly and eloquently said, open quote, our people are not difficult. They are just asking all of us gathered here to do one thing and one thing only, to do our work to do our work within budget, time, and without misusing public funds. Equally, Minister Kotongwana concluded his budget speech by saying, open quote, our economy is facing significant risks, uncertainty is on the rise, it requires us to do bold things, to put the fear of failure aside and execute the difficult trade-offs needed to get from where we are now to where we want to be in future. I would like to say, Honorable Premier, flowing from what the Minister said, we believe that in the SOPA you have put the fear of failure aside and clearly said where we are and where we want to be in future. In that regard, you have, Honorable Premier, 
place the bold program of townships, informal settlements, and hostels, popularly known as Tish, at the center of our work. And for that, Honorable Premier, would like to thank you. Honorable members, in presenting this budget to the people of our province, let me be upfront and announce that we are injecting into the Gauteng economy a total of 493.4 billion over the medium term expenditure framework, of which a bigger share of it will go into supporting, town, uh, supporting township uh, economy, creating jobs, especially for the youth, empowerment of women, and addressing the energy crisis, and of course, supporting social services. One of the key drivers of the township economy is entrepreneurship. As many people start their own businesses in order to generate income and create more employment opportunities for our people. By supporting the growth of the township economy, it is indeed possible to create new jobs, increase access to goods and services, and promote the much needed economic development in our communities. And let me be clear, Despite the challenges we are facing as a province, we remain steadfast in our resolve. We are unwavering on this mandate, and of course, as we proceed, we will further talk to this. In other words, honorable members, this budget, a big part of it, will focus on supporting townships. The 2023 MTF fiscal framework will see the provincial budget grow by an annual average rate of 3%, from 158.945 billion in 2023-2024 to 164.785 billion in 2024-2025 and 269.703 billion in 2025 2026. Honorable members, Houghton remains the economic engine, the largest economy on the continent, the 26th largest urban region in the world. Honorable Deputy Speaker, allow me to share with you the economic environment in which we are presenting this budget. As you know, the uncertain global economic environment has resulted in the downward revision of the economic growth projections from 3.4% for 2022 to 2.9% 2 for 2023 before rising to 3.1% in 2024. On a more positive note, the lifting of prolonged COVID-19 lockdown regulations in China is expected to boost global trade, increase demand, and improve global supply chains. This is because today there are more countries that trade with China. In fact, China's economy is projected to grow by 5.2% in 2023, which will be good for global economic output. And this will boost demand for its trade partners' commodities. We are encouraged by the rebound in the economy to pre-COVID-19 levels. Our country's economy continues to recover um, even at the time when we face multiple risks, such as the deepening energy challenges. Delivering the national budget to parliament last month, Finance Minister Ino Kotongwana revealed that the size of our economy reached 4.6 trillion in 2022, which means that it is bigger than what it was before the, COVID out, the, the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. In 2020, South Africa's economy surpassed expectations when it grew by an estimated 2.5% against the forecast of 1.9%. Honorable members, it is estimated to grow by an average of 1.4% from 2023 to 2025. As you may be aware, Statistics South Africa's economic data released just this past Tuesday revealed that real growth uh, GDP contracted by 1.3% quarter to quarter in quarter four from a revised upwards growth of 1.8% quarter to quarter 
in quarter three because of the adverse effects of load shedding. Consumer confidence is above 10 year average, and there are also signs of an upswing and recovery underway in services and tourism sector of the economy. Honorable members, Houghton contributes 35% to the country's GDP, amounting to more than 1.2 trillion rands. That's the worth of our economy. Data from our socioeconomic review and outlook, um, one of the key publications that we are releasing today shows that the provincial economy is estimated to have grown by 2.1% in 2022 against an expectation of 1.8%. The province economic output is projected to moderate to 1.5% this year before stabilizing at an average annual rate of 2% in the period to 2026. However, to address the socioeconomic challenges of our province, growing out and together 2030 say we must record annual growth rates of 4.5% per annum towards 2030. To achieve this target, the province will concentrate on increasing growth, which will lead to an increase in per capita GDP and reduce unemployment. Honorable members, in order to grow the housing economy, we will engage key economic actors, private sector, and the residents of the province to look at innovative and creative methods of consolidating the 35% contribution of the province to the GDP. We will report back on the specific interventions we are going to make on this matter. Such interventions will include partnering with municipalities and exploring a set of incentives to address municipal red tape that constrain fixed investments in the municipal space. We will be engaging the private sector on supporting the fastest growing sectors of the economy and I must also say, MEC Motara, um, we have already met and discussed on how to look at the fastest growing sectors in our province. We will also engage national government and state-owned entities on how to support the housing economy because they do have an impact on, our, on the economic hub of the country. We will also build partnerships with township-based entrepreneurs in the context of the Township Economy Development Act. We will leverage our infrastructure expenditure and that of the private sector to enhance the productivity of the Gauteng economy. The finance and business services sectors are primarily concentrated in this province, which also account for a significant share of the manufacturing output. Therefore, growing these two sectors will likely increase the growth of Gauteng's economy. Furthermore, a significant share of South Africa's exports of banking, services, and manufactured goods are sold to other African countries. Thus, increased economic growth in the continent will likely increase demand for Houghton's exports. We also take into account the risk posed by grey listing to our economy. However, we believe that National Treasury is adequately at handling this matter and would like to refer you to a very detailed and comprehensive website of National Treasury that deals with this question. Before I proceed to the fiscal framework, let me acknowledge that the budget we are presenting today is a continuation of the work done in the preceding years, for which there is immense progress based on the budget allocations of the previous years. We are therefore not reinventing the wheel. We also appreciate that we are slowly moving towards the end of the current term. Therefore, in outlining the budget to support the priorities announced by Premier Lisufi, we understand and appreciate, Premier, that time is of the essence. We have to move fast and with speed, but still do things correctly. That part we understand. Honorable members, having outlined some of the preceding work, we now turn to the details of the 2023 fiscal framework. The Houghton Provincial Government budget comprises transfers from national government in the form of provincial equitable share amounting to 148.2 billion in 2023-2024, growing to 153.3 billion in 2024-2025, and 160.2 billion in the outer year of the MTF. 
Added to this is money from national government in the form of conditional grant allocations accounting for an average of 18% of total transfers amounting to 27.4 billion, uh, 27.9 27 billion, and 29.1 billion in each year respect, in each respective year of the 2023 MTF to realize policy imperatives within education, health, human settlements, and transport sectors. The provincial own receipts accounts for 5% of the gross revenue available for the province to appropriate for its spending requirements, and this equates to 7.6 billion, 8 billion, and 8.4 billion in 2023-2024, 2024-2025, and 2025-2026 um, years, respectively. Honorable members, provincial owned revenue consists mainly of motor vehicle license fees, casino and horse, horse, horse racing, patient fees, and interest and on short-term investments, which contributes, to clo which contributes close to 98% of total own revenue. As Indicated in the medium term budget policy statement last year, we have set a target of 7.3 billion. And honorable members, I'm pleased to announce that as at the end of February, we have collected a total of 6.7 billion, representing 92% of the appropriated target. And I'd like to assure members that we will meet the target by the end of the financial year, you can already see where we are with raising our own revenue. We are the only province in the country that is raising its own revenue of this magnitude and scale. And therefore, this is good work. And I'd like to thank the officials of the Department of uh, in Treasury and those in other departments that are working together to mobilize uh, resources for the provincial revenue of Gauteng. 7.2 7 billion. Well done to our officials, and I would like to thank them, and I would like us to give them a round of applause. Our own revenue collection to date also reflects the recovery of the economy post COVID 19 pandemic, as observed in the collection of gambling and horse racing revenue. Over the medium term, a total of 24 billion is estimated to be collected. These estimates are mainly driven by growth in new vehicle sales of 16.4% in the fourth quarter of 2022, of which a greater proportion is attributable to the province, according to statistics, South Africa, February 2023. Honorable members, Today, we take this opportunity to briefly outline how we are using this budget made up of resources we get from national and those we raise in the province to finance our provincial priorities. I'm pleased to announce that a total of 83% of the provincial budget amounting to 412 billion over the 2023 MTEF is allocated to the social sector. So the colleagues in the social sector get this amount of money. These resources will be used to drive social transformation in Gauteng and are already in the baselines of the departments. Honorable members, let me now turn to the economic cluster, which receives a total of 66.6 .6 billion or 13.5 percent of the budget over 2023 MTF period. I'd also like to say it's going to be very important, honorable members and premier, that we also find resources to increase uh, the economic cluster budget because we are the economic hub of the country and our budget also needs to reflect that over and above that of um, the social cluster. The governance cluster. The governance cluster which focuses on, amongst other things, strengthening collaboration amongst all spheres of government, enhancing integrated planning for improved service delivery accounts for 12.1 billion, or put differently, 2.5% 2 
of the 2023 MTF budget. Now, let me at the outset emphasize that the funding decisions have been influenced by the ability of Gauteng provincial government departments to absorb the ample resources that we have just outlined as measured by their financial performance in the preceding financial years. Consistent with the commitment we made during the medium-term budget policy statement in November 2022, the strategic focus of our budget remains empowering women as a basis of contribution to the fight against gender-based violence and femicide. This we will do by repositioning and through leveraging smart technologies, our supply chain and procurement instruments to create capacity for departments to meet their quarterly and annual targets for women empowerment. We have come to realize that the supply chain function is critical to direct expenditure for goods and services and infrastructure to support achievement of specific targets directed at empowering women of Houting. And Premier, we take note of the directive you made about the amount of money and the percentage we need to spend on goods and services uh, supporting um, uh, townships and, of course, um, all the critical uh, sectors in the, in the economy. We have also announced that in order to support women in the different parts of the province, we will also track our expenditure through the technological system known as spatial referencing tool, which is at COCTA. And we were working with the department and the MEC of COCTA to improve this spatial referencing tool. In actual fact, we're getting, we're getting them about three million to make sure that they can improve the software of the spatial referencing tool. Through these initiatives, we believe we'll be able to meet our targets for women empowerment who continue to suffer at the hands of male perpetrators. And I'd like to acknowledge the debates that we had in the House uh, this week on gender-based violence, and thanks to all the members who debated. These empowerment initiatives are in addition to law enforcement interventions by the entire criminal justice, justice system to reduce the scourge of gender-based violence. We believe that in that way, we will be able to make sure that our expenditure changes the quality of life, particularly for women who are victims of patriarchy, the triple oppression of women, and gender-based violence. We are also confident that by repositioning and improving supply chain and procurement, we will also be able to meet our targets for job creation, especially among the youth of our province as the figures released by Gauteng Economic Barometer of the Department of Economic Development indicates that youth unemployment remain a challenge in our province. These issues, honorable members, were adequately and comprehensively also addressed by the Premier of the province in SOPA. Let me now turn to the earmarked allocations for the 2023 MTF, which were made with a particular focus on the five elevated areas that Premier Lissoufi pronounced when he assumed office in, uh, last year and, of course, also expanded on during SOPA. At the outset, let me also emphasize that the funding decisions have been influenced by the ability of GPG departments to absorb resources that we allocate and, of course, their financial performance, as already stated. Beginning with the functions that are at the heart of why we exist as a provincial government, over 2023, MTF period, a total of 4.6 billion, will be allocated to the Houghton Department of Education. These funds are to address the pressures in the compensation of employees' baseline, as well as augment the delivery of support services such as scholar transport, school nutrition, and school subsidies, and that is to make education more accessible, and we congratulate the Department of Education. Investments in education remain a priority as it is the foundation upon which a productive and economically active citizenry is built. Prioritization of the health and wellness of the people also takes up a significant share of what is being allocated to the Gauteng Department of Health. Additional to the existing baselines, 
with an additional five billion over the medium term with a focus on retaining part of the capacity taken on board to fight the COVID-19 pandemic and which will go a long way in strengthening the health delivery platform. Additional resources also go towards augmenting the goods and services baseline, uh, which has been under pressure from the fiscal consolidation measures undertaken in 2021 MTF, and which will, dip, will be deepest in 2023-2024 financial year. More crucially, of the 5 billion out of a total of 784 million, uh, and of course a total of 784 million has been allocated to the Gauteng Department of Health to address urgently the backlog in surgical and radiation oncology services, emanating from shortages, <laughs> emanating from shortages in both personnel and equipment and the knock-on effect of COVID-19 pandemic that stretched the capacity of the Gauteng Health System. In efforts to clear the backlog, Houghton Provincial Treasury and Houghton Department of Health have worked with civil society organizations such as Section 27 and the Cancer Alliance in an approach which involves the procurement of the necessary machinery, equipment needed for radiation therapy to assist the patients on the waiting list, particularly given that the nature of the disease requires agency. This collaborative approach with civil society in addressing the crisis is expected to address the waiting lists and anticipate, we anticipate that this time, next year, we will be outlining the resolution of this challenge in a much more profound way. I must also point out that this is an example of the forging of collaborative public and private partnerships that will yield important lessons in confronting the many health challenges that Gauteng faces. In the SOPA, Honorable Premier spoke of fighting crime being an apex priority. On that note, let me say cheers. Uh, on this high priority note, cheers. cheers. Honorable Premier, this is an apex priority. It requires an apex gesture like drinking water. Uh, there is obviously many of the people of our province and many of us affected indirectly and directly by crime. Now, this budget, honorable members, aggressively confronts the agency with which the Gauteng Department of Community Safety will be resourced to respond accordingly. I'm very much pleased to announce that the four billion additional allocation over the 2023 MTF is for the training and absorption of the 6,000 crime prevention wardens currently undergoing training that is scheduled to conclude at the end of April 2023. I hope this, I wish this could get a very thunderous applause. Um, yes. Premier, you have said that um, the budget of this department that used to be below one billion will increase into multi-billion of rents. And I'm very much pre uh, pleased, Premier, to say exactly what you have said, that the, the budget of community safety will grow into billions over time over the MTF from almost below a billion to four billion in the few months that you have been in office, Honorable Premier. This is a major achievement. Now, in addition to capacitating this crime prevention wardens with the necessary tools of trade, the resource allocation will also enable the acquisition of technological solutions to fight crime, such as the eye in the sky, that is the drones, and the leasing of helicopters to enhance the feasibility of crime prevention efforts. Also included in this allocation is funding for fleet services that Premier had announced to further capacitate traffic police to undertake their duties. 
<clears throat> Honorable members, in the next few months, and of course to the residents of the province, it's important to take this point into account, that in the next few months, in the next few weeks, my colleagues, MECs in the Executive Council, are going to present departmental budgets or line function budgets in this house. And the MEC will, the MECs will therefore outline in more detail the implementation of the priorities that the Premier has pronounced. Honorable members, let me now turn to our approach to infrastructure. As the Gauteng Provincial Government, we view infrastructure development as a key enabler to improve service delivery as well as a vehicle to stimulate economic growth and investment. While recovery efforts are spread across three spheres of government, the Gauteng Provincial Government specific interventions include the allocation of 574 million towards the Tswani SEZ and OR Tambo International SEZ, primarily for internal bulk infrastructure to make these sites more functional. This is a very profound allocation into the economic cluster, and I think it really deserves, honorable members, a round of applause. It is imperative that we continue to be diligent to ensure that the budget of 39.5 billion investment results in the desired outputs and outcomes. This amount includes a budget of 768 billion that has been set aside to improve the infrastructure within townships, informal settlements, um, and of course, our hostels, which is the TEACH program. And just briefly, whilst MECs will give the details. On the townships, of this amount, 3.5 billion, that is of the total amount of infrastructure, 3.5 billion will go towards the provision of new and improvement of existing infrastructure to in in enable the province to provide the required services. So we're putting this budget to look at TISH infrastructure in our townships. Some of the notable projects within the townships includes the construction of housing units at Subukeng Extension 28, construction of sewer pipelines and manholes and at Motlakeng, Pelsville, at Soshangube South, secondary school in Soshangube. Some of the, the, the part of the budget will go to informal settlements to improve the basic infrastructure services within the informal settlements in the province, 3.8 billion has been allocated to upgrade the following informal settlements as the ones that have been prioritized. Kwa Brown, Mamelo, Pills Farm, Tabong, Pangoville, uh, Persek, informal settlements, and Ratanda. These townships um, have been prioritized honorable members. On the hostels, on the hostels, honorable members, honorable Tamini, on the hostels. A total of 322 million rands will go towards the renovation and improvement of conditions of hostels. Some of the hostels Plans for the upgrade includes George Koch, Denver, GP, LTA Ritabile, Kwama Caesar, Dube, Orlando, Tipkloof, and Orlando West. These are the hostels that have been clarified. Honorable members, we continue to strive towards a balanced allocation between the need for new infrastructure while also adequately maintaining existing infrastructure to restore and protect the value of our investment over a long period of time. There is a need to make a more dedicated effort to ensure that projects are ready to proceed through the different stages across the infrastructure value chain and that we are more diligent in terms of the management of risks associated 
with inadequate infrastructure planning and poor delivery. Honorable members, we are now at a point in our journey towards improving infrastructure investments where it is imperative that the Gauteng Provincial Treasury, as the custodian that allocates the funds, must ensure that there is value for money on all our projects. Honorable members, value for money on the budget we are putting for townships, for informal settlements, for hostels, and all the monies that we are putting into this budget. Value for money, quality of our expenditure. We must allocate these limited resources to projects that will take the province forward and provide the required services to the citizens of Gauteng. At a minimum, Gauteng provincial government departments are expected to prove that projects are ready for implementation before they can be allocated funds with a realistic consideration of the length of time required for planning and, of course, approval processes. Gauteng Provincial Treasury will strengthen its monitoring and oversight role in terms of ensuring that departments spend allocated resources prudently and address problems in the infrastructure value chain across all four cornerstones of infrastructure delivery, such as planning, budgeting, procurement, and implementation, and of course, with a sound financial management. In line with Premier Lesufi's directive, we will establish a procurement pro a plan analysis unit. It will focus on categorizing commodities, link projects to budget, and track and monitor implementing of our procurement plans. We will also automate supply chain management functions to minimize human interventions in the procurement process. Let me emphasize, honorable members, Procurement is very much important, and that's why we are repositioning our procurement function. The energy supply challenges facing our country has become the single biggest threat to our economy, economic recovery, and any potential future growth if it continues to deepen over the short to medium term. This is not only because of its effects on the supply, of electricity only, but we also acknowledge the water and sewer reticulation challenges. That is why there is a heightened activity in finding solutions to mitigate the effects of load shedding. Despite the haste to find solutions, it will be prudent to resource only those proposals that are sound, that are credible from a technical perspective as well as affordable. The Office of the Premier, working together with Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Department, Houghton Provincial Treasury, and of course our institution, uh, our entity in Treasury, Houghton Infrastructure Financing Agency, which is GIFA, this um, collective work, they are building in-house energy capacity to support efforts that the province and municipalities are making in finding lasting solutions to the current energy crisis. To this end, as Premier announced, an amount of 1.2 billion in seed capital will be set aside by the Gauteng Provincial Treasury as announced by the Premier. I think this, honorable members, it's a major intervention in our effort as the province to find a solution to the energy crisis. If I'm not mistaken, uh, honorable members, we are one province that is quite advanced with respect to how to deal th with this problem. Yeah. For example, <laughs> GIFA working with its partners within Bukabunso Barona Initiative, a non-profit company, are facilitating the creation of a sustainable post-mining economy in the west region of Gauteng. Through this initiative, Sibanya Steel Water and Fawa Strand Dolomatic Water Association donated 30,000 hectares of land to, uh, to the NPC for development of agro-industrial projects and commercial catalytic projects. In 2022, G5 
TIFA issued a request for proposal to the market for development of Mirafong solar farm cluster. The solar farm cluster will be located on the land donated to the NPC. So far, GIFA has identified six independent power producers to develop the 1,500 hectares of this allocated land. And this has a potential of generating 800 megawatts. We are the only province that is advanced. I had, to, <clears throat> I had some province announcing that some, somewhere in a distant future, they will try to bring some electricity to the grid. We will be just this month um, uh, starting with the process of allocating land parcels to these IPPs, and this will be completed um, in March when the lease agreements will be signed. This is something concrete, something tangible, not what some other province was threatening to announce. Chief has already concluded negotiations with a private party on phase one of the rooftop solar PV project to generate close to eight uh, megawatts from selected hospitals. Honorable members, I think we are the only province that will be starting the rooftop solar project um, to solve the problems of renewable energy. As part of addressing, which other one? As part of addressing the energy crisis, we are going ahead with the phase two of the rooftop solar PV project in government owned properties, especially education and health. Others have just made announcements, there are no details. We will invite the developers as part of Houghton's response to the energy crisis, and we will be working with the private sector. Honorable members, we welcome the Minister of Finance announcement of tax rebates to encourage both businesses and individuals to invest in renewable energy. We believe the Minister has made a very good announcement, and we really applaud him. Honorable members, Compliance with rules and regulations is important to achieve clean governance in the province. Therefore, Gauteng Provincial Treasury will, in the new financial year, introduce pre-compliance checks to creating a purchase order for quotations between 500,000 to 1 million. Wow. Cheers, honorable members. The Houghton Provincial Government will explore procurement rules which allow government and its main contractors to buy from large groups of township businesses with systems linking them to supply as if they were one large firm. This will build the needed capacity for these businesses to supply large markets and discover new suppliers. The Houghton Provincial Government aim to spend about 60% of the 35 billion budgeted for goods and services to provide support to township initiatives and we're confirming what the Premier said. In line with the SOPA commitments, the province will establish an invoicing dispute resolution unit that will serve as an ombuds for disputed invoices. To this end, a dedicated central email has been established where all distributed invoices should be sent. The email address, honorable members, is, and I'd like to call on the people of our province, anyone sitting with disputed invoices not yet paid, please now, you can send your disputed invoices to. The people need, the people need to hear this. The disputed invoices at routing.gov.za. Mr. Mseman, you can send now. I heard you in the last budget. If you send, there will be an acknowledgement of receipt. The email is currently set up. Anyone with disputed invoice can send to disputed invoices at routing.gov.za and they will be paid. So we shouldn't have people saying, I'm battling with invoices. I don't know where to go. Order, and order. I must say, Honorable Premier, 
that we will also look at whether we need a better technological capacity to support this. For now, we are starting with an email address. If we see that um, there's a, a lot of work that needs to be done, we can look at smarter technologies uh, to support this function. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Gauteng Provincial Treasury, in support and strengthening the capacity of municipalities to manage their own affairs, has committed to provide the technical support to all district and local municipalities. In this budget, we have provided 10 technical advisors to be placed in these municipalities to support uh, the functions of municipalities. Their scope includes but is not limited to various disciplines on municipal financial management and the implementation of financial recovery plans where municipalities are under provincial interventions. Honorable members, you are well aware that the Houghton Provincial Government has made an undertaking to establish a state-owned bank to, ex to extend access to financial services to townships, small, medium, and micro-sized enterprises and residents, specifically those who remain largely excluded from the financial services. The bank will also support infrastructure development to help boost the economy and create jobs. We have now completed the legal due diligence as we committed in November last year on the state-owned bank and in the 2023-2024 financial year, just the year starting next, um, in, in April, we will be moving ahead with plans to develop the business cases for the bank. Business cases, honorable members, are critical to consult National Treasury and the Department of Public Service and Administration. That's why we need these business cases. I must also say the business cases are also critical to consult organized labor because we must consult with the workers on these two critical issues. To capacitate our healthcare system, we are also pushing ahead with plans to establish the pharmaceutical company. The legal due diligence on this project was completed in January this year and strongly supports the establishment of this entity. To the people of Gauteng, we will very soon share with them the details of the legal due diligence. What does it say and what options does it put on the table? In addition, we have also established advisory panels on both the pharmaceutical and the state-owned bank, and we will be announcing the members of the panel. Honorable members, with respect to uh, the matter of e tolls, let me reaffirm the point made by Honorable Lusufi during the State of the Province address and the feedback we gave in the media term budget policy statement in November 2022 on the ETOL note, cheers. This is the last one, honorable members, and to our officials and the guests. As we correctly stated, that the profound and historic announcement made by the Minister of Finance Honorable Inoko Dongwana, in his medium-term budget policy statement, settled the e toll matter beyond any schedule of doubt, with government absorbing the e toll debt split between the national and the routing provincial government. In welcoming this announcement by the Minister of Finance, we did order, indicate order. that there is still work to just, be done to fully... Just, just a second. Colleagues, importantly, we've got the audience in the gallery that must capture this. While your heckling is accepted and allowed, let's be considering the right of the citizens of Gauteng who are watching and our guests in the gallery. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Honorable members, I was saying that before we, in, we, we did indicate that there is still work to be done to fully implement and give practical effect to the announcement made by the Honorable Minister. 
It is therefore in this context that we reported that a memorandum of agreement will be concluded with national government. As Premier Sufi announced, the negotiations with the national government are still underway. Once these engagements have been finalized, the MOU will be concluded and proper feedback and update will be given. We are confident that the outstanding matters, such as the conclusion of the MOU, should not bring any anxiety or doubt with respect to the announcement made by the Minister of Finance in the 2022 medium term budget policy statement. Ministers made a statement, there is no go back, uh, going back on that. The negotiations will be fi finalized. We will make an announcement on these issues. As I announced during the medium term budget policy statement, in the 2023 2024 financial year, there will be no specific allocation that is required for our obligations on e tolls in this financial year. It is in this context, honorable members, that we would like to assure the residents of Gauteng that we will not compromise our priorities on social services such as health, education, including growing the economy. In conclusion, let me emphasize once more that the funding decisions have been influenced by the ability of GPT departments to absorb the ample resources that I've just outlined, as measured by their financial performance in the preceding financial years. I would also like to reiterate that GPG fiscal framework remains stable despite reductions in the envelope of resources due to downward revisions in the provincial equitable share, which have necessitated an increased level of circumspection in funding decisions and the need to be resilient in the, if, in the event of future shocks to the economy. In the context of many social and other challenges before us, the preparation of the 2023 MTF budget has been a formidable task and we are still seized with the responsibility to manage real fiscal risks such as the energy supply crisis, inflationary pressures, on cost of providing services, increasing pressure from accruals and low economic growth. Honorable members, I would like to thank Honorable Premier, thank you very much for your excellent and outstanding leadership, Premier, and um, for announcing the priorities of our province in, the, in a very bold way, as we said, Premier, and for pushing um, uh, and making sure that we serve the people of our province better. Thanks to the colleagues in the Executive Council, and I must thank the Premier's Budget Committee for your active participation, very robust engagements, and valuable inputs to ensure that the difficult choices we make when allocating budgets are focused on improving the leading conditions of residents of Gauteng. We thank the Finance Portfolio Committee, the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, under the capable leadership of Honorable Munyai and Honorable Kanyile, respectively, for their insight and oversight on all budget or financial management matters. Let me thank our HOD, Ms. Gumisa Munyani, and the entire Treasury team for their dedication to effective and effective management of public funds. I would like to thank you very much. Thanks a lot. We treasure the finances of the province. And thanks a lot, uh, HOD, and to the residents of this. Thank you very much, honorable members. I'm happy to uh, table um, the budget as stated in the speech. Let me hand over. I've already said, honorable members, that um, we are tabling uh, the budget as stated in the speech, and that is the, um, ex the expropriation bill for 2023, 
the explanatory memorandum to the bill, the estimates of provincial revenue and expenditure, estimates of capital expenditure, the socio-economic review outlook, and a copy of the speech will be delivered. No Mabengatini, Honorable Premier, Lukonu Chenjo, Echaute. Thank you to the Premier. Thank you, MC. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable uh, MC. Uh, can the combi cards be taken, please, next to me and be put? The combi cards being this way. Mukotla <laughs> being this way. <laughs> no, you are very safe. Mukotla is safe with me. Thank you, Honorable ABC. Uh, Secretary, please read the next order. Introduction of the <coughs> Houghton Second Provincial Adjustment Appropriation Bill for the 2022-2023 financial year. ABC, Mama Bolo. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, um, honorable members. Let me once more um, greet you. Um, I, Jacob Mamabulo, the MEC.